I know, right? Like, what's a union gonna do? Give me more pay? Vacations? And a break time? For what? 50 bucks a month? Not worth it. This is not about me or my show, Gopestek. And can you, one more time, am I saying that correctly? Go, is it Gopestek? You, 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 you're one of the rare ones using, uh, uh, pronouncing it correctly. So, But I don't wow. like to correct people. So Gopestek is the right one. Gopestek. Um, but okay. the thing is, like, there's a lot of people who see that and uh, they kind of mindfuck on it. So yeah. they, I found that kind of funny to see, like, all the, the bad pronunciation. And then the fun <laughs> part is, like, a Gracie on Feminist Critic, which are, like, a really nice channel that I follow uh, a lot, too. Yeah. Uh, she uh, knows what is the real pronunciation and sometimes she will repronounce it because she wants to pronounce it bad on purpose to oh. see how the other will pronounce it bad in return. So that's kind of funny. Funny. All right. Well, Gopastek, I really appreciate uh, you uh, uh, being, uh, you know, being a part of this community uh, with me and uh, the greater community. I, I, I really appreciate to... the community too. Like, uh, I'm yeah. kind of a surprise. Like, I was expecting like uh, um, Twitch to be a little more like you. YouTube or like Facebook or, or even maybe Twitter and uh, it's uh, almost like the polar opposite of Twitter. Like people are mm. extremely inclusive amongst the leftist politics. Um, I feel like there's not a lot of people who are like uh, having beef with one another, mm. not feeling like there's more, much more competitions uh, between channels. It's like uh, everybody is like uh, uh, willing uh, to see the other thrive. So it's really uh, great. Okay, yeah. Um, I, um, I guess I salute you for something, somehow having avoided at least some of the drama. Uh, uh, right now we're seeing, I, I suppose it's, it's Twitch versus creator versus, uh, 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 this is on the left, what's literally happening right now, and I'm going to try to avoid naming names when possible, but there's currently a Twitch creator going after a YouTube creator. So, But on the left wow. side, with, with few exceptions, people seem to be... You, 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 you seem to say that you're seeing a lot of unity? Yeah, and unity is, uh, is a big word once again. Okay. Like we also have some uh, differences and I'm sure like uh, there are some uh, content creators that you will lean more toward because you have the same political view or like the same style or whatever. And uh, there are some people you like a little less, but nonetheless, you will not like... Uh, uh, totally uh, deny them uh, or anything like... Um, so yeah, you can talk about unity more or less. I know that there, is, there were a, a small beef between uh, two of the people I w I'm following right now, mm. but uh, overall that's uh, nothing comparable to uh, a lot of other platforms where um, it feels like having a beef with someone is almost a strategy for some people. Mm. Uh, sorry, I had to uh, knock a, a fly yeah. and try to go in front of the camera <laughs> and uh, she uh, expelled. Goodbye. She, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I killed an animal no. on, on camera. I'm a terrible person once again. All right. Um, so uh, you don't believe in uh, in freeze fl fly speech. You, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, you, you bonked the fly. Well done. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I should not do that. I'm uh, once again. I Cancel. I believe in human rights, but I have problem with fly rights. Fair enough. They're gone. They're out of here. So <laughs> go with tech. Uh, what 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 I'd be what I'd love to do actually before we uh, get going here is actually uh, just give you the opportunity to uh, uh, ask you you know what, what what's on your mind what's what are you noticing uh, just in the in the world in general what what's what's uh, taking up uh, you know space in your head rent free I, I don't know what I'm trying to ask you know what are you thinking about like, these uh, days what what do you what's up like uh, right now um, I mean I've been like a leftist for almost 25 years. So uh, that's a uh, kind of a long experience in comparison to uh, some people who have not lived 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, so at that moment, I had the times to uh, think about, I had a lot of things coming into my head at one point or another about things that uh, upset me or not. So I tend to have more uh, relaxed approach on the things because uh, like the change is uh, painfully slow. And so that's uh, something. But other than that, like right now, uh, my main concern is a little more individualistic, sadly. It's just that I try to uh, cope with uh, coming to America and uh, mm -hmm. living in Texas and uh, the fact that uh, it also endure, like uh, my relationship with my wife because she's working and I'm not because I cannot have the right to work because of uh, stupid immigration laws that were done by the Ku Klux Klan in the U.S. Wow. So, yeah. 
<laughs> that's the kind of things that uh, I have to uh, cope with. But uh, other than that, like I have plenty of things in my mind all the time. Like, um, you will, if you were re-asking me this same question in an hour, you will have a different answer. So, awesome. yeah. Well, uh, I've, uh, I've I've had many guests on the past couple of days, and I'm I'm already looking forward to having you on again and. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have the chance to ask you again and look forward to your answer. Uh, I will be like a regular <laughs> guy coming <You're> regular. back. <laughs> and every time I will talk for one hour, you will never have the time to, to, to finish your, question, your quiz. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm going to keep you to the hour, though. I'm going to keep you to it. Hold you, hold you to that uh, hard 60 minutes here. Um, no, it's, uh, this, is, this is great. We've had you on a couple of times. Uh, I remember we we were interview uh, interrupted one time by a, a big raid and I, I had to end it there, but uh, good to have you on. Let's let's uh, how about this? Let's dig into it. Let's dig sure. in. And I'd like to begin uh, a discussion here uh, called leftward, leftward bound. You mentioned uh, already briefly that you've been a leftist for twenty five years. Here on the channel, we describe leftism as anti capitalist, and increasingly, I want to make sure that we're defining it as intersectional as well. And uh, however you define it, um, or if you don't consider you leftist, that's fine too. I do consider the show to be for leftist and leftist adjacent, but I would like to assume you are a leftist, especially since you said that you are. Do you want to sort yeah. of talk about uh, how you became a leftist to begin with? Okay, for me, it's a little complicated. Like, uh, there will be uh, lots of things to talk about. Like, I think, I, I said I'm a leftist since 25 years, but technically I'm a leftist since, since birth. It's just that uh, I will not identify myself at the, as a leftist uh, at that time. Like, uh, my uh, dad was a unionist. He was uh, at the head of uh, his secretary for a car company uh, and uh, be the secretary of that uh, union. Uh, my mom met my dad when he was uh, doing like uh, union uh, formations and she was trying to unionize uh, people in uh, the um, um, workshop restaurants that she was working in. So basically uh, she, uh, rest uh, she was working in a restaurant in the total industry, you know, like the oil company. And she was taking care of the canteen and she tried to unionize like uh, the waitress and uh, the kitchen to get uh, more rights. So that's how they met. Um, my grandmother is a uh, natist. She met uh, my grandfather who is a black man uh, during World War II, and he was 30 years older. So we I had all this kind of a uh, background, family background that uh, that um, drives me toward like a uh, uh, left value. So it's just that when I started to be 15, I more or less decided to do my first uh, strike. Which was in uh, actually it was 14 years old. Uh, it was in 1995. We were uh, fighting against uh, the government at that time. We were just uh, I was in high school, and we decided to uh, to not go in class for the day. Someone told me like, oh yes, there's a strike. There's a, uh, some high schools that are on strike, and I just jumped in and uh, I saw that they were like I could help with the organization of the demonstration and ended up uh, to uh, like a committee that I, I have no idea what the fuck that was <laughs> and uh, start to uh, give my point of view because uh, I have a large mouth and that's basically uh, how I became um, a leftist but yeah it took me uh, a lot of time to start it to really uh, understand it uh, understanding political theory because for me, it came naturally. So it's you still have to uh, put words on the concepts that are already in your mind in order to uh, to do it like, like that. But it's mainly through praxis that I start to understand theory. Uh, do, do you want to go a little bit more into depth about that specifically? Actually, uh, uh, do, do you have any uh, specific experiences where you can talk about getting into theory and what that meant for you? Well, I have plenty of examples, uh, like. Um, like the first time, for example, you have to uh, fight with, um, I don't know, like uh, you, you like you are organizing uh, things. You will, uh, like, for example, distribute uh, leaflets of like uh, the propaganda for your union or this kind of things, because like propaganda can also be good propaganda. Right. Uh, at the end of the day, propaganda just means communications. <laughs> so so uh, you distribute leaflets and you will be having people will start talking about politics with you. And sometimes uh, that uh, will uh, force you to realize that you need uh, actually, uh, the right word for some of some of the things because you might be right on your ID or like you might be right on the, the knowledge you have. So that for me has almost never changed. 
it has evolved a little, but I, my positions have almost never changed. But when you will be confronted to someone that has more knowledge than you, despite being wrong, you might have difficulty to debate him. So um, acknowledging the fact that you might lack knowledge in some aspect can be important to be uh, stronger in uh, debating. And uh, I realized that uh, by discussing with other people, so mainly that's how I started to understand better politics. But at one moment, you might have to read uh, books. So it took me a lot of times before reading Marx, like I started really reading Marx at uh, 27, 28. I already have a good understanding of, uh, of the work, but I didn't want to read it because I already understand what was in the book, <laughs> kind mm, of. Yeah. And it just uh, okay. got reconfirmed when I read it. And a uh, lot of times that's what happened because when you start to organize, you will meet a lot of other people that will uh, force you to realize uh, things and uh, understanding things. So I will not advocate for not talking about theory or these kind of things because at one point, the fact that I was not too much in theory also helped me to talk to uh, people from the working class. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will sound a little like a wise ass when you uh, know too much about theory. But... Uh, I was proud to say that when I was 18, I was playing football and basketball. So <laughs> that's kind of the idea. I was not like fighting for the revolution every day. My main uh, goal for me was like uh, being be with my friends, have a beer and uh, kick the ball. That's, uh, that was the idea. Um, is, it, is it okay if that's still the idea? That sounds really nice, right? The, the ability to... Oh, I'd love to like fucking... I, I want, oh, I, all I, I want is all my streamer friends to hang out with me and play in the park with, with the ball and some beer or whatever we want to do to make us happy. That sounds nice, right? Especially these days. It's been so long. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I see Binks himself telling me that I have a Che shirt when I was a teenager. I never yeah. had this kind of shirt. <laughs> like, uh, pff, uh, not, that beca not because I will not uh, acknowledge that, not because I don't like the chair or anything. It's just It was not just on my mind. So okay. I know that the chair was a leftist. I didn't know exactly what he, uh, what he has yeah. done. And the first time I, get, I see the guy from my hometown from the Cuba Friends Relationship uh, Association, I just think he was a weirdo because like uh, what he tried to talk to us about was so out there. And now I'm that weirdo kind of because I know now I was, uh, what he was just not trying to preach some things that doesn't exist and that uh, I've never heard. So for, for me, it sounded like a conspiracy terrorist. So despite being a leftist at that age, I was still wary of like uh, weirdos. And there are some weirdos uh, amongst the left. Like, uh, yeah, I've met some uh, people who are extremely weird. Right. I've met other people who are weird. People other than me. <laughs> yeah, at some points I was also considered a weirdo, and it's kind of funny because, like, uh, then later on you see people uh, like um, apologizing for uh, considering you a weirdo later before in the past, and that feels great. It's just at that time uh, it was kind of weird. Yeah, uh, I, I like this idea in chat: balls, beers, and bongs. I think White Boy <laughs> Summer is back. Yeah, that's the three Bs. That's back. like. Uh, that's the uh, basis of all philosophy, balls, beers, and bongs. Beautiful. Weird leftist gang rise up indeed. <laughs> wow, this is, uh, this is fascinating. So you started, uh, you, you actually forced yourself to read the Marx. Um, I, I didn't of, read yeah. Marx, I just watched the videos. Am I missing out? I don't like to uh, read. Yeah, like uh, that's what yeah. I, you were trying to read Marx uh, on your channel and uh, yeah. or watching videos on it. I was basically in the chat telling you, yeah, you can be a Marxist without reading Marx. That's a possibility. It um, feels like I did, but go on. And, and, and something even weirder. I've met someone that were consider himself a right wing Marxist. What? And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like uh, proud to be a right wing Marxist. So I've seen that uh, at university he was a. Uh, uh, fascist, basically, uh, distributing paper for the right wing. And uh, one is telling me like, yeah, yeah, I think Marx was a great uh, analyst, but because I come from a rich family that profits of uh, the systems, and I think that I should uh, uh, handle class warfare to uh, keep the means of production to myself and uh, oppress all the people under me because you are subhumans. Uh -huh. I was like, okay, that exists. You will see that. So I, I, I really believe that for every types of shitty ideas that you can see yeah. in the world, that at least one guy that uh, yeah. believed. So I, I like how he goes. He looks at uh, Marx's 
critiques of capitalism, and he goes, yeah, I'll do. I guess I'll do that. I guess, <laughs> yeah. that, I guess that's me. This is a thing that blows my <laughs> mind. Like, we all see the same movies and TV shows in our lives, you know what I mean? But some people sort of decide that they're willing to become the bad guy. And I just yeah. never, it never made fucking sense to me. I guess I'll be the bad guy. I'll profit off of being an asshole. But that's basically yeah. what uh, people that uh, call themselves uh, ANCAPs or libertarians are saying. It's like, uh, oh, yeah. if my mom is not uh, any worse for me, I will be ready to uh, get rid of her. That's basically uh, the idea of the libertarians. Like, uh, uh, everybody has to fend for himself, even if they are from your own families or this kind of things. It's like individualism at its peak. And... Yeah, like for me, when uh, I see that there are so many libertarians in the U.S., I found that extremely cringe. Individualism at its peak. Explain that for people. Who I saw that was self-explanatory. It's just people that. Uh, so, if you're five and you don't understand yeah. the term <laughs> individualism, uh, it's someone. My that friend. thinks that everything that counts, that matters, is himself. He doesn't care about his mom. He doesn't care, care mm. about his brother. He doesn't care about his neighbor. doesn't care about anything. He only cares about himself. And he's really, the, he really to fight violently. Or violently might be complicated for five years old. He's really to sure. use any means necessary uh. <laughs> <laughs> to get rid of, <laughs> to get rid of uh, competitions because only things matter is his own has. It's a bad person. Don't be like that. <laughs> just, just bad guy. Dun, 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 DMCA. <laughs> Moving on. All right. Uh, I think we're ready to move on to the next uh, next section here. Sure. Where I ask you, uh, where 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 we rather be best? Hashtag be best. So if you could go back in time, maybe imagine a younger version of yourself, or maybe uh, if you could go back in time, that maybe you can't do that because that's not possible, but we can imagine a younger version of ourselves sitting in chat right now. What are um, some little uh, uh, shortcuts you might be able to uh, teach them uh, to help them along and either in their life or in their leftism? What do you think? So um, I took a little of uh, thinking about that because like uh, mm. my first answer would have been that I was not very humble when I was a, a kid. I tend to mm. had uh, lots of people telling me that I was smart because uh, I managed to uh, take care of myself in a lot of uh, things. So I like humility and that's something for myself. But for the others, I will say that you should try to understand your own prejudices uh, in order to... Um, to um, starts to be more inclusive with other people. It's really easy to uh, to look at stereotype and try to simplify the world in order to understand it be better. And understanding that you have prejudice uh, over everybody else, especially when you're young, that you have preconceived notions, uh, and try to uh, recognize them is, I think, the best uh, advice you can give to uh, like uh, someone that someone period <laughs> that's just a good advice <laughs> as a whole and uh yeah i had sometimes like uh, some prejudices that uh i can uh, remember like for example because like uh, my grandfather was from caribbean island and i had like a slave uh, uh background in my uh, ancestor like my his gr my gr the grandfather of my grandfather was a slave that's basically the idea and the so castle. i thought that i He's canceled. Yeah, I'm canceled. canceled. <laughs> and uh, because of that, I thought that I knew a little about Caribbean island. And once where I meet a guy from Haiti that start to talk to me about the Haitian Revolution, which I didn't know anything about, but uh, I w didn't want to lose face because lack of humility and uh, prejudice about yeah. uh, my own knowledge. And uh, I just looked like an ass on that day. So uh, learning your history, learning uh, try knowledge it's not like a only a big word it's like do your homework and uh and um it will help you uh not look like a dickhead at one point you will look like a dickhead at one point mm -hmm. like nobody is perfect you will uh, not win all the battle but uh um growing from uh from uh, those battles that you lose is something important so having humility being aware of your prejudices, those play very much well, uh, very much into each other, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I really, uh, I'm, I'm loving this. I'm gonna, that's gonna make a great clip for, for someone. Someone's gonna hear that, and it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be what they need to hear that day. Perfect. Go Pastek. Let's move along to the mm -hmm. next portion. 
which uh, I like to call the leftist inquisition. Let's have a little fun here with Bernard Pivot's questionnaire. Am I yeah. saying that right? Bernard? Yeah, Ber Ber Bernard Pivot. Yeah, Pivot. The, the, the T is silent. The T yeah. is silent. Uh, Bernard Pivot. He was uh, an interviewer. He had like a, for 40 or 50 years uh, a show about literature where he invited oh. a lot of uh, people. There is a really famous show where he invited uh, Charles Bukowski. And uh, Charles Bukowski yeah. started to, uh, to uh, mess the whole place, uh, insult everybody, uh, and uh, while drinking beer, it was in the 70s. Great, great TV. <laughs> so is it, is it weird to you that like, I'm using this questionnaire? Because it's, there's sort of been different versions of this questionnaire being used. And, no, no, and it's not. You, it's, not yeah. uh, it's just a classic questionnaire, so it doesn't uh, surprise me. Actually, uh, I'm surprised that you don't try to uh, tweak some questions to fit a little more your things. That's basically what it's supposed to do. It's a uh, yeah. frame. It's not like uh, something uh, close that you cannot change or anything. I, that's good. I'm, I'll, I'll consider that. I really will. I, I, I might be uh, changing this down the road. Let's, um, let's stick uh, with people's uh, questions, though. So, first up, what's your favorite word? Go Pistec. Uh, that's a uh, tough question, but uh, I think I will uh, use the word uh, comrades. I don't use it that much every day, but uh, I think that uh, uh, it is an important word amongst uh, the left to uh, actually uh, realize, even if uh, despite our differences, even, for example, a Marxist-Leninist will meet a Trotskyist or something like, like that, we will use the word comrades because at the end of the day we realize that uh, we have to fight the same fight, which is uh, being anti-capitalist and this kind of things. I know, like there were denims that uh, made a tweet yesterday about the fact that uh, lots of people were using it uh, unironic, uh, ironically rather than uh, unironically. And I mm. think that, um, I mean, sometimes you have a lot of people who will start uh, using it unironically, who later on will use it uh, um, in a more casual manner. Mm -hmm. And understanding that it's actually a, a, a great word uh, that um, helps us uh, feeling a sense of brotherhood amongst ourselves. So I will choose the word comrades. Comrades. Even if in French we say camarade. Say that again. Camarade. <laughs> there are songs that are called camarades. They are like yeah. most of them are like left-wing song, of course. <laughs> so yeah. uh, you have a song from like Les Salles Majesté, another one from Jean Ferrat, and the uh, lyrics are really based for both of them. Beautiful comrades. All right, comrades, mm -hmm. you listening up? Because I'm going to ask uh, Copastec, what is your least favorite word? Okay, so once again, I chose a hand cap because I think it makes sense. Like for me, if you call yourself an hand cap, you're basically an idiot because it's uh, two words that doesn't go with one another. Um, you cannot be an anarchist and a capitalist at the same time. So one is like for no hierarchy, the other definitely have a hierarchy inside it. So first of all, you're an idiot. Then consider <laughs> that anarchist is uh, something from the right is also another fallacy. Uh, so yeah. that's a word that you try to pick from us. I could have chosen libertarian because it used to be a left word. Like libertarian was the other word for the anarchist. So you can see also that it's uh, denouncing like uh, what uh, Chomsky was talking about, about them trying to get our words to uh, get rid of our vocabulary for not allowing us to fight. And uh, yeah. just saying people genuinely thinking that uh, because they are consider themselves handicapped, it is a thing. It's just so ungenuine that it's like uh, annoying. So once uh, you start the discussion, you have to tell them like, okay, you're stupid. I will explain <laughs> you why you're stupid. And now you cannot be genuine uh, about it. So you will have to realize that the word you're using is stupid. So call yourself what you are, which is a fucking Nazi. Oh <laughs> and, we will get, and we can dance from there. <laughs> so so that's basically the idea. Yeah, so I really don't like the word I'm kept. Watch the fuck out, ANCAPs. Gopastex got your number. <laughs> <laughs> but I could have chosen another one. Like, you were saying that moist is a word that uh, lots of people doesn't like. <laughs> I found it funny. But uh, <laughs> I will not rant about moist for two hours. I, I will rather, yeah. like, uh, choose another annoying word that I found meaningful to uh, tear apart. Awesome. Well, then... Um... Moving on, what what is your your favorite drug? And you can take that any way you like. 
So uh, you'd be surprised. Like uh, I don't do much drugs. Not that uh, oh, okay. I don't want to disallow the right of other people to do drugs. It's just that uh, it never felt really appealing to me. Like uh, mm -hmm. probably because like I had a brother that uh, died at the age of 20 that uh, mm -hmm. was uh, uh, having cystic fibrosis. So I see it all. Uh, uh, use of drugs. For example, I remember we are doing like a tournament on a NBA courtside, I think it was on 64. And because it was under morphine, we had to get rid of our, our, of our games and uh, all these kind of things. It was, it's a long lasting uh, disease. So I had to see uh, those kind of things. At the same time, in my family, because he had that, uh, everybody stopped smoking. So there's almost nobody in my surroundings that is smoking. So I was oh. not necessarily. Uh, to uh, leaning toward either like tobacco or things like that. Yeah. I, I still uh, drink a little. I really like uh, rum cocktails and beer, mm. but uh, I don't consider that like uh, my drug of choice. If I have to choose uh, some my drug of choice, it will be cheese. Cheese. <laughs> so, but uh, at the end of the day, I don't want uh, anybody to um, uh, to deny their fun. If they were, if you want yeah. to do cannabis, that's fine with me. Like uh, most of my friends smoke cannabis uh, in France. And uh, even in other country, I know that some other people that have done like things that are a little uh, more, um, I would say, less casual. Um, the only thing is, like, uh, no matter the drugs you're taking apart, you need to respect the others and uh, and your surrounding. If you start to mm. be an ass because you're using drugs, it might be like uh, the wake up call to to stop using it. Other than that, like, uh, feel free to to take whatever you want. Uh let me let me dig in there. What uh, what's your favorite rum cocktail? I'm a, I'm sort of like a bartender kind of guy. Uh, it, behind a few bars you have here. like this classic uh, thing for in France called a planter, which oh, is uh, an uh, tiponche. So oh. the tiponche is like the, the one with like a, a sugar a syrup sugar, yeah. and uh, you will put some spices. Like generally, I mean, in my family we put nutmeg and cinnamon and. Uh, um, you can you will put uh, the rum directly, but you can also like add some fruits to that. So you can put like orange juice and these kind of things. <laughs> and in fa my family, we tend to not use like the uh, usual syrup that you can uh, buy. You know, like clear syrup that you can uh, do uh, yourself uh, while cooking. Right. We will try to make a fruit in that syrup. So like uh, vanilla, pineapple, uh, uh, raisins, and all, lots of other things in our in our syrup and uh, the things like it's. You have to eat it with like a spoon. Uh, it's, okay. it's, I eat it instead of drinking it, <laughs> but yes. you get <laughs> and put like uh, that's uh, like that's how family drinks. That's uh, that's really good. That's and that's a kind of a trap. Like you can have like uh, some things that is maybe like thirty percent alcohol at the end of the day because uh, you put a uh, rum in it and uh, the mix, and it will feel like uh, you're drinking or orange juice that is a little spiked, and uh, start singing. Uh, uh, like uh, you were at a parade or something <laughs> on the camera for no reasons. Yeah, yeah that's the, the whole idea. Oh, someone uh, asked, what's my favorite cheese? Uh, uh, yeah, most what's of your the, favorite cheese? Good, uh, good. I have several favorite cheese. That's very yeah. French. You have several favorite cheese. There is one that is very <laughs> difficult to find. It's Old Salers. Uh, that's a cheese that is, has been matured for like 10 years. It's from Cantal. It's a hard cheese. And uh, when you will see it, it looks kind of weird, but it tastes extremely good. And then there is cheese from my region it's called Neuchâtel. It's a uh, 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 art shaped cheese. The story is quite cool, but I really like the creamy, flowery uh, crust. And another one from uh, the Alp called uh, Roche Baron. It's a mix of two different cheeses. Cheese, which is a blue cheese and a roblochon and uh, I really like those uh, three cheese that's three of my favorite but there at the end of the, oh and there's Mondor Mondor is a, another one that I it's a seasonal cheese you can only have it in winter otherwise they don't produce it and uh, it's very very creamy you eat it with a spoon and you uh, like use the spoon and uh, like uh, basically it's almost liquid uh, in it yeah. and there is like a, a, a pine wood all around the oh, no it's cedar I think it's cedar wood cedar wood around the cheese that basically uh, mature inside the cheese and give like a uh, this kind of a woody taste in it and it's amazing well, there you have it, folks. Um, find someone to love you as much as Gopastek loves cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk about cheese for for hours. Like uh, they were like that quote from General de Gaulle in France that we are saying like uh, uh, France is ungovernable uh, because uh, how can you govern a country that have three hundred types of cheese? That's the whole uh, <laughs> quote that he gave to. I think it was like a UK journalist that he told that. Yeah. 
Oh, that's this 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 is fascinating. We should have a cheese day. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to we'll have to uh, book that show. Yeah, you have a loyalty a day on May Day. You should have a cheese day on May Day. That will make more sense. Uh, or just have May Day on May Day. Fantastic. We'll do that. Book it. Book it. Moving on. Oh wow. What uh, Copas Tech? What sound or noise do you love? Uh, sounds or noise do I love? Uh, the sounds of a good bass line. <laughs> That's uh, nice. like uh, nice. it's like um, as it, it can be the bass line for lots of different styles. It can be like funk. It can be like uh, uh, art tech. It can be uh, lots of things. But I uh, really like bass uh, in general in music. I think it's uh, it's like an underrated instrument that uh, give uh, like um, people moving and uh, just fun. Uh, you know, something <laughs> like from German bass to whatever. Oh, slap it up. Yes, I love it. That's hilarious. The good bass sound. Yeah. Mm. Like I remember that the music from uh, uh, Ben Sharpa. Uh, okay. I will put that in the chat. Uh, if you okay. want to search what I consider like a really good bass line, you have Ben Sharpa Hegemony. Uh, that's an, uh, a good uh, uh, song. And there is also like the bass line junkie music from uh, Dizzy Rascal that is hilarious. With the A. Hey, the best signs with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where he like uh, shot at a kid for trying to turn the, the music off. That's hilarious. Whoa. Like, let me let the cat out, home. Oh, you, uh, so I will start continue talking about a uh, bass. So if you have not seen it at one moment, uh, he's coming with like a big subwoofer to a house, ring a bell. There's a kid going out. He explained why he loves bass. And the kid just turned it off and he starts to be like, why are you touch it? What are you to touch it? I will fucking bash your face, motherfucker. <laughs> and you see the mom of the kid just looking at him like, uh... <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so the way into Gopastek's heart is via cheese and bass. Yeah. You heard it here first. Cheese bass line. A cheesy Ooh. bass line. Cheese, oh. You like a cheesy bass line, yeah? <laughs> yeah, let's put some Boney M. <laughs> so that takes us to our next question. Maybe this is it. Maybe this, that's the answer. What sound or noise do you hate or intensely dislike? Uh, it's, I don't know, like squishy sounds maybe? Like uh, <laughs> the sounds of the laughters of my enemy. <laughs> I don't know. I hate it when they enjoy themselves. Yeah, I hate exactly. when they enjoy themselves. See, that's why that's exactly why we come here and have fun because uh this sounds of the of one of the best ways to piss your enemy <laughs> off is just by living your best life. Exactly. So that's why we have fun here. That's why we are, we're not fighting all the time. Go Pastek, let's say they made you in charge of picking who would go on the uh, a new banknote uh, wherever, I don't know. Uh, okay. I would you choose, could, I guess uh, you could pick where, I don't know. Uh, just well, who would it be in where, I don't know. Uh, so I will uh, go for the banknotes in America and I will put French people on it just uh, because that's <laughs> already fun for for <laughs> for reasons. And I will put like thinkers <laughs> that I will force Americans to wonder who the fuck the, the, that guy is. So I will go for Albert Jacquard and Pierre Bourdieu. So Albert Jacquard was a geneticist. He uh, is also a philosopher, a uh, really based person. So look uh, quite old. If you, uh, I will put also his name, Albert Jacquard. Yeah. And uh, he made a, a comment on philosophy that I found really interesting. It's like, uh, instead of saying, like, uh, you are what you do, or, like, uh, you are the, the, the actions that you take, he's saying, like, you are the link that you create with others, and that uh, without the others, you cannot define yourself. So uh, uh, you need to uh, cherish, like, the link we, you have with others. And that's some, uh, an idea that I found uh, really good. So that guy, that old man. He's uh, cute. Yeah, he looks like he used to have a TV. Sh they gave him a TV TV show when he was uh, like maybe two or three years before he died, where he will uh, talk philosophy with uh, teenagers. That's uh, that was extremely interesting. Like for example, he wow. was uh, talking about like uh, yeah, if I do uh, if I met like uh, LeBron James for example, I will uh, once even if he was ninety, if I I will want to play basketball with him. Not because I know that uh, I will crush him or something like that, but mainly because uh, through uh, 
playing with him, I will learn how uh, to get better at playing basketball myself and I can uh, enjoy the betterments of myself through the links that I will create with uh, LeBron James, which I find <laughs> hilarious when you're 90 years old and you have this kind of uh, mindset. I, I use LeBron James in order for you to understand <laughs> what I was talking about. It. That's, uh, that's uh, just fun, guys. And you see like the kids were, were uh, having fun while learning about philosophy, which was uh, interesting. And the other guys that I will put will be Pierre Bourdieu, which is a sociologist that basically explain uh, he has a book that is considered one of the best books to learn about sociology called Distinctions basically where he explains that uh, the way you behave the way you talk the way you uh, all the choices that you make are also the reflections of uh, where you're from and um, basically uh, not to, kind of like social determinisms and uh, in order to um, get uh, a better situation in society, you need to get rid of that determinism to actually evolve in society. And uh, that's another idea that I will find interesting. I'm pretty sure that, uh, and Bourdieu was really important. He was saying also that uh, sociology is a fighting sport. Hmm. In France, it's like a pun, making, ma meaning that uh, sociology is a uh, part of the struggle and it's uh, helping the struggles to go on. And he was also like uh, uh, into the action. He was not just in the university uh, uh, studying things and being like behind the shelf and try started to be like, hey, I know what you should do, like uh, uh, someone like Jean-Paul Sartre or something. He was, he was uh, into the fight uh, with people. And he made a lot of uh, different books that are all based as hell, like uh, you will always learn something interesting in it. Um, and there are some other uh, things that are important, uh, interesting with these characters, but uh, Pierre Bourdieu, I that for Bourdieu? Now. Bourdieu, that... Bourdieu. Okay, B -O -B -O -U -R -D -I -E -U. like B-O-U-R-D-I-E-U, right. like uh, how I spelled it in the, in the chat. And uh, Pierre Bourdieu, yeah, that's an uh, important thing. He's more known, uh, in France, he's more known than he is in uh, the US. But in US, you might find videos uh, in uh, English about uh, his idea of social reproductions and the fact mm -hmm. that uh, uh, elites reproduce themselves. And that's also why we have a systemic uh, racism uh, in uh, mm -hmm. every country, but in the US uh, in particular, because the generation of uh, black people that uh, were put into slavery, they didn't have enough uh, uh, capital, either social capital, uh, wealth capital, to actually uh, strive for uh, a betterment and uh, to uh, help the next generation to, be, uh, to uh, do better than they do in terms of status. And so it kind of brings some inertia into uh, this thing. So basically uh, gunning down democracy, uh, not democracy, meritocracy. Democracy, with nobody wants to gun down democracy. <laughs> oh, my bad, like a uh, slip of the tongue there. No problem. So yeah, cool, that's cool. who I would put in the bank notes. Like this, it will force Americans to wonder, like, who the fuck are they? And then when they will search <laughs> about that, they will uh, be forced to be like, hey, uh, yeah, that's difficult to get someone better than that. So let's put Ariet Tubman. You're right. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Piss off all the right people. Yeah. So Gopastek, what, uh, I don't know, think about the uh, professions, jobs you've had. What, what profession or job other than your own uh, would you not like to attempt? Never. Uh, jobs that I would never want to do? Uh, yeah. I guess I would never want to be uh, a CEO. Okay. I, 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 I couldn't live with myself if I knew that all my money comes from oppression and uh, that uh, every time uh, I'm uh, having a blast, it's over the uh, sweat of uh, my, some other fellow humans. So that's, but that's an easy uh, take on it. It makes me feel like a great person. At the end of the day, I, doesn't want, I don't want to be uh, uh, working in the sewer in Paris. Like, uh, sure. That would be a, more like... A, uh, a better take on this, like uh, these people, they end up uh, having a life expectancy under the retirement oh, wow. uh, in France. So basically, um, yeah, the, you basically get rid of like 20 to 25 years of uh, your own life expectancy by working in an environment where you're constantly surrounded with, with toxic gases, <laughs> leaving uh, the sewers. So that's, uh, and uh, it smells like shit on top of that. At least yeah. it was toxic gases that sounds, that uh, smells good. And uh, at the same time, their work is highly valuable and the society tends to forget about them. I'm pretty sure it's the same for the sewer, uh, sewage worker in uh, other big cities like uh, New York or Chicago. 
And uh, those people are like everyday heroes that uh, I don't want to do their jobs. No. Just, just I don't want to. <laughs> no. I can imagine a society where they're rewarded greatly. No, they're not really rewarded greatly. Like, uh, you no, know, like not. the shittiest your job, uh, you, they're probably on minimum wage. Right. And uh, because that's how you do in the US. When nobody wants to do a job, you create fake unemployment and then you what make the... people compete for the minimum wage on that job. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's a shitty job. There were like that uh, TV shows that you had in USA about like uh, shitty jobs that were very, very yeah. interesting. I will advocate people to at least watch that once. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of shitty jobs that uh, that exist, and uh, most of them are like underpaid. Yeah, um, I think it's Mike Rowe in Dirty Jobs. Shitty yeah, exactly. Jobs is the David Graeber uh, uh, left uh, anarchist theory. Uh, yeah, that's the one Patron yeah. put uh, in the chat. You know what? Dirty in Jobs. Yeah, he's funny job though. Like Moving on. So uh, let's imagine you were reincarnated at some point uh, and you could uh, come back as either a plant or an animal. Uh, what would it be? Uh, I guess I would be a honey badger. <laughs> honey badger. <laughs> you know Don't give a fuck. Like, like uh, those things that is a very uh, uh, ready for a fight at any moment. <laughs> kind <Yes>. of. <laughs> like uh, it's like a... Don't don't push my buttons or I will eat your balls or something like that. Very uh, six skins too and uh, yeah. uh, like uh, determined. So yeah, that's basically uh, some things that uh, I found uh, could be a good description. Uh, there is an, another reason why I chose this one. There is one of my best friends that used to tell me that uh, uh, I was uh, the, this kind of a uh, guy too because uh, in his mind I was always going for like. Uh, uh, fighting for dead animals or something like that. Fighting <laughs> for I dead animals. Kind of, <laughs> which I find kind of disrespectful, but the, the way he was telling it was funny. Like, uh, oh so I found that hilarious. Oh so did you need that? Honey badger don't care. Honey badger crazy. Honey yeah. badger don't give a fuck. Yeah, if you're ready for like a social struggle and you're on a strike or something, like uh, definitely defining yourself at the only badgers, it might uh, help you uh, uh, fighting your opponents and uh, go for the throat. <laughs> Honey badger, first time I've heard that so far. All right, <laughs> Gopastek, last question in this series. Mm -hmm. If heaven and God exist, what would you like to hear them say? when you arrive at your version of the pearly gates? Oh, I, I don't think I will uh, have him hearing say anything. I will, uh, I will uh, lecture him about uh, <laughs> why, motherfucker. Why? Why did you do that? Like, uh, why you uh, expelled people from the uh, Garden of Eden? Because I guess that's the thing now. I didn't believe in it, but uh, <laughs> if you're there, I'm there, uh, there must be a reason. So why did you do that? Why uh, did you uh, punish people because uh, they have to believe in you? Like, uh, if you exist, you just have to show up from one time or another. Instead of being like, oh, I'm too lazy to show up. I will uh, stay in the, <laughs> in the sky, giving a... Uh, uh, scolding to everybody and when they die I, I will start punish everybody because that's what I do so yeah I will uh, I will lecture God I will uh, I will probably be kicked off but uh, I will go full on the badgers on my lecture <laughs> because like oh. uh, there are so many things that are fucked up uh, if uh, God exists that um, it, it needs to take responsibility for it like uh Pretending that to create uh, people uh, free will for the people, and then uh, being like, "Hey, wait! I gave you free will. Let's uh, rethink about this and uh, punish you for any uh, misbehaviors that you take." Yeah, that sounds fucked up. That sounds like uh, some kind of um, a guys that just like to uh, to see animals uh, uh, suffering. Like, uh, "Hey, let's see how you run uh, now that I cut your legs." It's a little like that. That's mm. yeah. So we, you don't like a kid uh, starting to uh, to uh, torture uh, ants. So that's the same. Um, I'm sorry. Don't don't want to interrupt you there. 
No, no, it's just like a, that reminds me Dewey uh, in a Malcolm in the Middle, you know, like when he's like, a, you live, you live, you die, you live, you live, you die. <laughs> I mean, uh, what will you say to Dewey? Dewey is God. <laughs> exactly what it is. For me, when I imagine God, it will look like Dewey. And uh, it's terrible. Um. As we wrap up uh, this section here, I want to ask you if you have any questions for me. But before we do that, what, what is that a beer you're drinking? What do you got over there? What uh, is that giant drinking. mug? Yeah, I'm, I'm always drinking tea. I have a jug tea. of tea with a mug of tea. That's beautiful. Uh, jug that and mug. Really nice. That's what you should have. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, was wondering yeah. if I was like, going to have to get on your level. No, I, no, I guess I'm always looking for an excuse my level to drink. And, uh, and if it was rum, it would be problematic. <laughs> <laughs> There's that yeah, tea. I always have a, I'm on stream with a, a jug of rum, and uh, I can follow through. Like I'm not blanking. Let's go, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it reminds me of that video that Rob K, uh, the movie that Rob K and I reviewed. It's called Another Round. It's got uh, Maz Mikkelsen in it. It's really great. It's in, uh, it's in Dutch. Uh, you barely notice the subtitles. All right. So that wraps up the uh, Leftist Inquisition. Um, other I'm than no, 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 no. Let's go back to it because uh, yeah, this is where I let you. Question. Yeah, yeah, I'm you get to. Con- I'm sorry, I'm not done. Yeah, it's uh, now. Now it's on you. Any, any questions for me? I don't know anything. Anything at all? Yeah, I was uh, wondering, like, uh, if you uh, had to choose, like, a, a philosopher to put on the banknotes, what would you put? Because I think that's a that's a good question. I'm not. Um, I, I would. I would start off oh, and just say person. that I'm not the. I'm not the person to be asking that question, but. The, the there there are just some th- people coming to mind right now that have really inspired me as of late and I truly am of a uh, 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 no gods no masters uh, mindset mm. uh, there's a few people that seem to break that mold in the sense that uh, I can't seem to find anything fucking wrong with them one of them's comrade Rogers Fred Rogers but he wasn't as I don't know if, if it's fair to call him a philosopher at the same time it might not be fair to him if we don't call him oh, a philosopher. Oh, a philosopher can come from a, a lot of different places. Once you explain what you think, you're a philosopher. Like, uh, we are philosophers. Like, uh, we, should, uh, not, we should deny uh, an elite to call themselves philosopher while not letting you call the, ourselves a philosopher. So if you consider Mr. Rogers being a philosopher, that's okay. He's... Really quick, let me pause and thank Booth, uh, Booth for the 13 yeah. and 12 biddies. The 13, 12 biddies, really appreciate the support, you beautiful human. Really appreciate yeah. that so much. You bring a, a, a smile to my heart, y'all. Um, wait, what were we just talking about? Uh, uh, we were talking about Mr. Rogers uh, so, putting on banknotes. <laughs> so, you know, banknotes, I, I, I do like the idea of Mr. Rogers. Uh, a previous guest mentioned that, and uh, it's it's really sticking to my mind as something that I, I think I'd like to see. I also like the thoughts coming from based daddy, big dick Richard Wolf, as well as uh, uh, David Graeber. I've been um, really inspired mm-hmm. by those two uh, as of late. But I'm 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 a new leftist. I'm newly minted. I'm exploring ideas. You know, nothing Maybe wrong we, with that. I think it would be really funny to put Mao on a on a on a dollar bill. You know? uh, he's already on the Chinese bill. But <laughs> you know, put put it on one of ours. Make make the make some people shake. You know. I, I remember when I visited China. Like the biggest uh, bill notes that they have is a 100 uh, yuan, and uh, yeah. those things are like maybe. Uh, Five dollars, ten dollars, something like that, and so I had uh, like uh, a lot of of them because my card was not necessarily working, and everywhere I will uh, go there, so I had uh, some catch on on me, and so I made a picture with all those bills uh, that I had, where like uh, you're using fans and like make it rain with <laughs> bills that are actually not that big. <laughs> And that was like uh, very, very funny. Like uh, you see that uh, when you go to the bus station, most of their uh, money is actually bill, even the small, uh, the, the small money. Like uh, try to imagine that your p- pennies are bill too. And so yeah. you so you give like uh, to pay for the ticket and you see like uh, there are that person next to the driver that he has, uh, how do you call that? Like, you know, like the beanies that you uh, put your money on and it's full of cash. And she had like a, something like a that big of cash where it was all ranked in a crescent order to pick the money. So, yeah, Mao was on a, so, some of those bills. Uh, you're going to love it. We call it a fanny pack. Yeah, that's the word I was looking and for. And that's so dumb. Pack. I, can, like, I never remember that, that word. Yes. Yeah, 
It's it's I guess that's your your fanny. Yeah. And that's where your pack goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I always yeah. thought the fanny was on the back. No, what's a fanny back in slang? So yeah, I got it. <laughs> it's very strange. Uh wanna wrap up any other questions for me here? I'm I'm not no, I'm in no, no rush. No, that's fine. I uh, right, it's fine. Right. Any questions for Gopastek from the chat? Link to Gopastek's cash money video. Uh, it's not a video. It's more like pictures. Uh, if okay. one of my friends on Facebook, you will see it. Like uh, okay. the, the whole idea was to have fun with that. Like people see all the face of Mao on the bills yeah. with me uh, 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 venting uh, my head with it. It was just like uh, like the communist types of uh, rap videos or rap pictures. That was funny. Awesome, awesome. Any other questions from the chat? Speak now or forever hold your freeze peach. Go Pastek, I'll, I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. What's so your favorite wait. movie in French? Oh, favorite uh, movie in a, French. Um, I watched one of my favorite movie recently uh, on um, on my channel. It's called The Big Illusion. Uh, it's a movie uh, from 1936. Uh, which is still based nowadays, but it's not necessarily like my favorite movie in French. Like, uh, I really like uh, C'est arrivé près de chez vous. Uh, I don't know how to translate that in English. It's a movie about, uh, it's basically I have like a camera crew. It's also a black and white movie from uh, in the 90s, and they're following uh, serial killers that is basically explaining how he killed people. And the movie is hilarious. And um, maybe one day I will show another French movie that I really like on my channel called Bernie. And it's a story of like a crazy guy called Bernie. He's like looking for his parent because he's been abandoned as a kid. And he re when he will meet his dad, he realizes that his real name is Donald. So just for my American audience, I want moment I need to show you that movie. And uh, the guy used to kill people with a shovel shovels that he sharpened uh, on the uh, iron slide that you have on freeways while the car is going full speed. The movie is hilarious. Uh, there's, a whole, uh, there's a whole critics of that movie by Robin Williams, who have seen that movie uh, in the 96, something like that. And he uh, talked at least for half an hour while Albert Dupontel, the guy who is uh, playing uh, the role of Bernie, is a genius. Yeah. And um, yeah, that movie is hilarious. It's kind of been uh, forgotten. Uh, in France, it's a movie that is very, very quotable too. And um, yeah, so that's four movies that I uh, gave you. And uh, you should also watch the, movie, the masterpiece, which is uh, the movie uh, La Haine, The Hate, movie from 1995 about a suburb in Paris. It's basically uh, the French version of the right thing. It's another really great movie in French. And um, you might recognize some actors in it. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good movies. Awesome. Awesome. Good questions there. Well, all right, Gopastek, I think uh, I think we'll leave it at that. This is a nice mm -hmm. chat. I'm really happy we were we had a chance to catch up and and uh, uh, allow me to get to know you a little bit more. As you know, I'm on this on the screen all the fucking time. So <laughs> it's nice to sort of break away from that and uh, get to know uh, other folks in our community. Thank you for being part of this uh, wonderful, uh, greater leftist streaming community. Thank you for sharing your story. You're my favorite Frenchman in Texas. Um, I don't know <laughs> uh, that many, but... Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, there are some. Like, they are, like Baylor wants the March Madness, and uh, one of their players is Wait, French. There are more? Yeah, there are more I, French people here. I think here. you're going to have to I'm, fight to the death. Okay. Uh, yeah. I can't. I can't stand the idea of there being more than one. So uh, I'm just. Gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna forget you said that. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm a host. The badger. Frenchman in Texas. I will get them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe we'll bring them out someday. Um, are they leftist? Yeah. Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> right, not yet. We could push them left. No. We could push them left. No. no, not yeah, yet. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so okay. goodbye then, and uh, thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, you being here today. Love your face. Bye, Copasek. All right. All right, all right. That was a good one. Oh, I always break it like this. It's broken. Whoops. <laughs> Yay. Hey, YouTube. You're watching a clip from my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Simpson, where you can follow for free and subscribe for only $5 a month. Thanks for watching.